ChristianGeekCentral.com. Hold still! You lied to me, you lied to me! In the face, in my face. Put it in the peanut butter. In the face, in my face, in the face, in my face. In the face, in my face, in the face. I thought you said this guy was a Christian. What, what is this? Liberate tutte me. Hey, I'm Peter Franson from Christian Geek Central and Spirit Blade Productions, and I've got the Flash on my brain. And how could I not? I mean, here I am uh, on vacation for a week out in Pennsylvania, but still, I can't stop nerding, especially when the Flash TV series premiere just aired tonight. Oh my gosh. I watched it almost twice now, the first time with some crazy interruptions that couldn't be avoided, and the second time, the recorded version completely uh, <laughs> without interruptions, which, uh, and it was great to be able to see it uh, almost two times. Lots of interesting, cool stuff going on. I'm very encouraged. It's, it's not without its flaws, but, um, Long story short, I'm going to stick with this one for a while. Maybe even, maybe even appointment television for me. I'm not sure. Uh, it depends on how long it takes to get to Hulu and wherever else online. I, you know, I might be willing to wait but because I do hate the commercials. But uh, anyway, let me just talk about this a little bit. First of all, Grant Gustin as Barry Allen the Flash. This is the kind of hero that I want to see on screen and the fact that it's you know, a representation of one of my favorite DC comic books characters makes it all the better. He's a nerd. He's he's really likable. He's sweet, uh, and and he you know he's kind of like what I felt like um, Superman should be in the New Fifty Two. What Superman you know should be in many ways. If they were to reinvent him today, I think this is what they should be giving us, he, because he is realizing the fantasy that Superman, the first superhero, was created based on, and that is I'm a nerd. I don't you know people don't understand me, but they don't know it, but I'm really something special inside. I'm really something amazing that they would just be blown away by if they if they got to know me better, if they knew my secret, you know? This is the, the germ that started the entire superhero franchise with Superman. They've lost their way with Superman, they've lost that aspect of him, and they're reviving it in this uh, version of The Flash, and, and I just love it. Um, and you see it also some in Captain America, but even more so, they're playing up the nerd aspect in this, which is great. Um, He's, uh, he's, you know, as, as Green Arrow, the character, points out in this pilot, uh, he can be more than a vigilante. Uh, the unspoken idea there, I think, is that he can be a hero because he can inspire and he can rescue. He's not just taking out bad guys, he's rescuing people from danger. And I think that is so uh, fundamentally something that we all want. We want a rescuer. We want a savior. Even, though, even if we don't call it that, really deep down inside, we want a rescuer, a savior. Um, and, uh, and this, this, the way they're treating this character, I think, really touches on that uh, reality that's that's at the core of, of who we are. Um, the tone of the show is is a really nice fit, I think, for a property like The Flash. It's not too light, um, and definitely has some cool, like, serious crime drama going on with the CSI, you know, type stuff and the, the cop drama, you know, type stuff going on. Um, but it's also not too heavy. I mean, even though a guy gets shot in the neck... Oh, man, uh, that was crazy. Uh, so it showed you that, okay, they're willing to go gritty, they're willing to go, you know, intense and a little bit dark with the violence, but the whole show wasn't like that, you know? Um, so they're just, but they're allowing for that, which I think is going to be important for the length of the show, so it can have some ups and downs and some really intense moments, and you don't ever feel like the show is sterilized. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't stay there. It's, uh, it's, it allows itself to be fun, it allows itself to be hopeful, it allows itself to be optimistic. Um, and, uh, Coming from me, that might sound strange because I, I tend to like dark, gritty fiction, but since I know they're allowing for that and they're going to have moments of that, it, it makes those ups and downs, those moments of light so much better um, knowing that they live in a world where darkness can still exist. Uh, let's see, what else is going on? I think that the characters have potential. They didn't um, oversell their personalities, you know, like, hey, I'm the stereotypical ABC person, you know, or whatever. Um, it was, you know, like the, the one guy with the long hair who's kind of like the Star Labs geek, uh, you know, he was you know, okay, so he's the young genius geek, you know, who's just enjoying himself a whole bunch. We've seen that kind of character a million times, but he was doing a fine job. He wasn't annoying, and so, you know, I, I'm totally cool with that. Um, let's see, what else? 
Um, oh yeah, the gal who had lost her fiancé nine months before. Um, you know, they got that plot point in there, which I think has a lot of potential in the future, but they, they didn't oversell it. Um, so yeah, I think the supporting cast was really good. My notes here are not organized very well at all. This is just kind of like, what's on my brain? Hence the name of the segment. <laughs> But anyway, some nice fan service. They had Linda Park reporting, uh, even though she's connected to Wally West. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, oh, yeah, we had a reference to Grodd when we looked at the, uh, the the remains of the Star Labs building. You know, there was like a cage that had been ripped out of with a, looked like a license plate, some kind of metal plate that said Grodd on it. Obviously a reference to Gorilla Grodd, who I wouldn't mind if he never appeared in this show. Um, nice fan service also in that Jeff Johns was very much involved in the development of the show. Um, and you could see his influence based on what he'd done in the comics. What other stuff? Um, oh, I'll get to that in a second. Like I said, it's all going to be out of order here. I did like that cool stuff at the beginning when he was looking at this, the, the crime scene and they had like those overlays of text and stuff. That that was cool and, and I'm glad, I hope they continue to play up the CSI crime investigation stuff because I think that's interesting. Not only that, but the way they did that, it said, okay, we are interested in telling stories not in a cookie cutter fashion, but in creative ways. Um, and and that's what interests me as a person that's going to sit down and devote any time to television. Don't just tell me the story. Tell me it in a compelling, interesting, creative way. And that's what's going to draw me in. Um, in addition, of course, to characters. And speaking of characters, although I thought that there was a good start, because I don't want them to oversell, I don't want them to do too much, um, I do think that they could uh, stand to slow down still. I doubt they're going to do this because it's a CW show. Slow down and show, don't tell. When Iris sees Barry for the first time after his coma, um, you know, she's like, oh my gosh, she gives a big hug, and she's like, oh, and she's all talking to him and stuff like that. I mean, these guys grew up together, and if they, they could have sold that bond a whole lot more by her totally just weeping and holding him and hugging him for, you know, I don't know, like 10 seconds of screen time. And that's a long time in screen time, um, but I think it would have been worth it to just kind of sell how grateful she is to see him again and just how desperate she desperately concerned she was for him. I would have loved to see that instead of all this this brief hug and then blah, 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 you know. But at CW, that's probably what we're going to get. That said, you know, it's a pilot. And for a pilot, I, you know, if, if like most good shows do, they're going to grow and get better beyond this, I think we have reason to be optimistic. Um, but again, I'm pretty biased. I'm a DC guy. I'm not an Agents of, Field, of S.H.I.E.L.D. fan, and that's probably in part because I'm just not as, as invested in the Marvel characters. I think they're fine. I'm just not invested in them like I am DC characters. Um, and plus, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is like the, the uh, miscellaneous corners of the Marvel Universe, and this is freaking The Flash, you know, so, uh, let's see here, um, you know, some other aspects of, I guess, the CW-ness showing up is, you know, hairdos, for some reason in CW shows like this one, uh, everybody has product in their hair, even when they've just come out of an explosion, they've gone from kind of like the clean look with product to the messy look with product, you know, <laughs> but it's all very produced, everybody has super smooth skin, I wish I could see people that looked a little bit more like regular people, but kind of the way they're lighting this show, the way they're doing makeup on people, it kind of keeps me just a little bit emotionally at a distance. It takes it takes it off the ground a little bit instead of, you know, where I'd really love it to be, but, but that's all right. Um, I love the father and son potential drama in this. Of course, I love the fact that they cast John Wesley Shipp as his dad, John Wesley Shipp, who played The Flash in the 1990s ill-fated TV series that lasted one season, The Flash, in, in uh, 1990. Um, and he did a great job as uh, the Flash then, and and did a solid job as the dad now. I mean, if I if he wasn't the Flash before, I don't know if, if I would have cast him. Um, I, I don't know that he's the, the strongest choice for this, but he's certainly going to you know serve the fans. And I thought he did a fine job in this uh, pilot. So um, I'm anxious to see kind of what else they do with that character. And I'm a sucker for a father son story. I don't think there's enough family drama. Uh, um, and by family drama, I mean families that are fairly functional and that love each other. You know, we've definitely got family drama going on over an arrow, but I'm talking about functional family drama that's maybe just a little bit more relatable. You know, not everybody's mom is a crime boss or whatever the crap is going on in arrow these days. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway, and yes, I know, you know, I'm talking, his, his dad is behind bars for life, you know, yeah, not everybody's dealing with that, but they, they have a loving relationship, um, that there is conflict in the context of this very loving, compassionate relationship, um, and both parties are, are innocent, they're, they're, they're good people, you know, uh, that are just kind of dealing with, a ho with horrible circumstances. I, I'm interested in that kind of family drama, and again, father-son drama, 
I'm all for it. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, it was a nice, speaking of references to the original show, the lab in this pilot looked suspiciously like the lab, the kind of the bricks and stuff like that, uh, of the lab in the 1990s TV show. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Um, I think the tone of this show, I kind of criticized it just a little bit for being like, you know, kind of a little bit too light and a little bit too, you know, producty and stuff. And But I, I think that the tone of The Flash fits the CW mold better than, say, a show like Arrow, which could stand to be more gritty and stuff. And I am going to try and give the premiere of Arrow uh, an, another shot this uh, this year and see if it can, it can grab me again. But anyway, uh, but I think that this is... This property is a pretty good fit for the CW. Um, it's also going to be a sci-fi show. I, that seemed very clear at the very end in the epilogue when there was, you know... Uh, I, well, I, I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it yet, but I mean, there was definitely a reference to, like, maybe some crazy sci-fi elements that will just be a blast to explore, whereas Arrow is really pretty grounded in, in reality. This is going to blow the doors open for all kinds of metahuman sci-fi... Uh, I don't want to say it stuff, but it'll be great. Uh, I hope. Um, let's see here. What else? Oh, the, the, the visual effects. Let's talk about those. Um, very well done. I love them showing super speed in multiple ways. Slow motion and then him zipping around and sometimes a combination of the two. And they, they're wise, I think, to when they show close-ups of him running to just show him from like here up because I, I think it's, it's really hard to make running look cool when it's full body fast, you know, fast motion. Uh, the, the few moments where they do that, uh, they do show him full body are usually in slow motion. You know, as opposed to him going, I think that's hard to show that and make it look cool when it's super speed full body shot. I think the slow motion uh, full body shots work better. Um, but uh, the, the visual effects look good. They still clearly look like CGI. It's clearly still a television show and, and it only looks, you know, a step or two above where we left off with Smallville not too long ago. But um, still serviceable. And, and to me, if they can sell me on the drama, the characters, and the concepts, then I'll forgive some visual effects. You know, I'm cursed with an eye that picks out CGI, so I, I do that a lot if the rest of the material stands up. And I think the show has potential for that. Uh, let's see here. Grodd talked about that. Hairdos. CSI stuff. Father's son. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see more of who, of who Iris, uh, I, I almost said Iris Allen. Um, in the comics, she's, uh, becomes Barry's wife eventually, but uh, who knows if that'll be the case in this show. Uh, Iris West, is that her last name? I didn't quite catch that. Uh, it's her maiden name in the comics, but I want to know more of who she is. In, in the pilot, she just seemed like the prize, you know, like the, the girl that he loves and he's always loved and he wants to, you know, be with her and stuff like that. But who is she on her own merits, you know? Uh, there was briefly a mention, I, I don't know what she does, I didn't catch it. I, the only thing I caught was when her laptop got stolen, she said, oh, that's got my dissertation on it. So maybe she's going for a doctoral degree of some kind. Now in the comics, she's a reporter, but I just saw her, I think, maybe working in a coffee shop or something. I don't know anything about her. And I want her to be a strong, interesting character. Um, I don't want her to just be a prize, you know? Right now, she feels very shallow. Um, they cast uh, they cast an African-American woman, you know, and kind of change that that up, you know, and that, that feels a little bit more like, it's kind of like a demographic checkbox. I don't mind that at all, but show me that she's more than that. Show me that she is more than just a freaking demographic uh, box being checked. Um, so I feel like the, the Iris character was totally... Um, underserved in this episode and I think immediately like the very next episode they need to tell us who she is and why Barry is so crazy about her you know that will help me want him to be with her and on a CW type show that's what they want you to feel they want you to want the the two romantic potential romantic leads that are destined to be together they want you to want them to be together that's what creates the tension of the whole show right now I don't care I don't care I'm maybe more interested in him getting together with the gal that lost her fiancé, you know? <laughs> or, I don't know who else, but, uh, but Iris is not interesting to me at all, and, uh, yeah, that's, you got do a lot more with Iris, guys. A lot more with Iris. What else? Oh, the music! We gotta talk about the music. I love the music. It was inspiring, it was cool and electronic sometimes, but it also had this nice, uh, piano kind of music box type theme that evoked a sense of of fantasy and mystery at the same time, and, and Mary, maybe even just a touch of fairy tale. I mean, it, 
I want to get the soundtrack of this pilot. Um, I, I, I looked up who the guy was who wrote it. I didn't recognize his, the, the, the composer's name, but I hope that he's the composer for the whole series because I loved what he did in this episode. The mix of sounds, you know, the, the driving electronic stuff, but then also the inspiring heroic stuff, the mysterious fairy tale type stuff. I mean, what great variety of colors. Um, and, and I think that that maybe is an indication of the different types of stories that we're going to be able to see in a show like this. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about that. There was, uh, oh yeah, another couple more f uh, fan references, the Ferris aircraft reference, the uh, Detective Chire reference. Um, let's see here, what else? Um, oh yeah, moderate model posing. Model posing is um, what I call the tendency in CW shows for actors to make actor choices. Hmm faces, you know, and that's an over-exaggeration, you know, but they'll, but they'll do things um, that seem motivated only by an aesthetic choice and not motivated by what the character is thinking or feeling. And so that's what I call model posing. Like there's a moment when, and I don't have glasses handy, but there's a moment when like the, um, the owner of Star Labs, whatever he is, the big honcho of Star Labs, he's listening to Barry's story and they cut away to him while Barry is talking and he's got his glasses in his hands and and uh, he looks down at them before putting them back on as, as if he sees like a spot in them for a second. Then he puts them back on and looks up. And, and that just looked like a, an actor choice. I'm like, why did he do that? What does that tell me about his character, about who he is? I, I don't know what that was, you know? And, and it's just little teeny things like that, that that many people might not notice, but they add up to just kind of fake characters. <laughs> Model posing, that's what I call it. Uh, let's see here. Um... And then also, this comes with CW shows. I think there are too many young characters. Uh, this is a problem with the DC Universe right now, too, that they killed off the entire older generation. Uh, I mean, Clark's parents are dead. The entire Justice Society has been remade into young punks. Um, you know, there's, there's no sense of uh, learning from the older generation. And right now, all we've got in this show is Detective West and... Um, I, f I feel like Detective West and Barry's dad, you know, that represent kind of the older, wiser generation. Um, you've got the uh, the guy who owns Star Labs, but I don't know that he's going to, based on the epilogue, I don't know that he's going to be somebody that's going to be like this, you know, person who shares wisdom. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to be someone to look up to or not. Um, so, you know, and you've got all these lab assistants or whatever they are, the gadget guy and the bio biological girl or whatever, you know, that lost her fiance. They're just all of them are so young. Barry is so young. Very, very, very young. And that kind of stretches my suspension of disbelief a little bit because I'm like, are they all geniuses fresh out of college that got these amazing jobs right away and are, you know, like totally great at what they do? Uh, I don't know. But it's a CW show, so, you know, I guess in if the show lasts long enough, they'll all be older. <laughs> but... For now, we got a bunch of uh, pretty young people doing the CW thing. Um, and, you know, we've got this... Uh, this, this little uh, meet-up scene with uh, Barry Allen and Oliver Queen, Green Arrow, from the show Arrow. And uh, you know what's funny is I watch that and I'm like, okay, that's a little tie into Arrow, and Flash is a spin-off, technically, of Arrow. But I wouldn't be a bit surprised if in a few seasons we're like, oh, yeah, remember when, like, Arrow... Like, can you believe that Flash was a spin-off of Arrow? Like, Arrow who, you know? I mean, I... I just have a feeling this show is going to take off like crazy. It's going to be hugely popular, and uh, and going to and as long as they don't screw it up and start doing weird experimental things two seasons from now, I think it's totally going to run the course that uh, that they desire for it. Which would be wonderful to see, like because I uh, uh, Smallville, I think it went ten seasons or something. I don't know what, how long that was. It was insane for what it was, but uh, based on this pilot. I wouldn't mind this show going for 10 seasons, especially since um, shows do tend to get better as they progress. And this was already a promising pilot. Not without some flaws, not without some things that made me go, come on, guys, really? Uh, but overall, and again, I'm biased because I'm a huge DC nerd and a big Flash fan, but overall, I, I think this is fantastic. I think it's the best superhero show on television based on this pilot alone. So those are my thoughts. What, what do you think? 
did you watch this? Are you gonna watch it? Do you, am I totally off my rocker? Or, or do you think like, yeah, this is this is a great show? Or it's like, Peter, you're full of crap. This is totally wrong. Well, I want to hear your thoughts uh, in the comments below. And then after you do that, I hope you like, uh, share, subscribe if you like, want to share, and want more videos like this. And after doing all that, I hope you go over to ChristianGeekCentral.com and join us there as we continue to geek out and seek the truth. ChristianGeekCentral.com